Hey guys, this is going to be part 3 in the DIY SIPS container build. I'm calling it the micro SIP because it's so small. So last time we went ahead and took one of these 6 inch pots and did some plastic welding to seal up the holes and it was waterproof. So we're ready to go on to the next stage which is going to be to cut a hole in it so that we can put an airline through for an air stone like this. I think a small one like this should be just fine. Two possibilities here. We can either cut a hole and then seal it up around the tubing with some silicone or some glue or maybe a combination of both. The silicone on the inside and some epoxy on the outside to give it some rigidity or we can cut a hole and put a grommet in to try to make a seal that way for this particular one i'm actually going to use one of these one-way airflow valves you can see what it is it actually unscrews open here is that it has this rubber septum which has a hole in the middle and so if air or water is flowing this way it pushes on it and it pushes itself closed whereas if air is flowing from this direction it you know pushes it open and these aren't perfectly watertight or airtight or maybe they are I don't know if you put some Teflon tape on this thread I'm sure you can make it airtight or just glue it up so that's going to be actually a nice addition, I think, because if we put it in like this, air can go in, but water will never be able to come out. So if it's just sitting in here, um, you know, we can move this around and unplug it real easily and plug it back in. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole uh, in one of these smooth parts that hasn't been uh, welded over and try to get that as close as a fit as possible and then just glue around the edges. So to do that I'm going to use one of these tapered drill bits and yeah I think it should be just fine. And to see where to put it, let's see, I want this to basically be resting on the bottom if I put the hole too high, then it's going to be kind of sitting like this inside of there. I can just line these up and mark the spot using the bubble stone. So just off the bottom, basically. Alright, so I marked off the spot there. I'm just going to carefully drill it out. periodically check to see the fit. Okay, so the fit's already, but I want to kind of, uh, um, let's see, it's tapered on this clear plastic bit and there's an arrow which 10. So if we can just go just past that arrow, so just right here where the black and the clear plastic meet. So just a little bit more. Okay, there we go, perfect. Okay, so our air stone will just sit in there like that. We'll just have a short piece of hose connecting them there. And you know what, this way there's also no way for light to get in. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and just add some glue there to reinforce it even more. On the inside I'm going to again use the silicone and just try to put a bead around the edge it's going to be hard to get underneath but i'll use like a little toothpick or something to get it under there and the main seal is going to be on the outside and for that i want to use this e600 stuff it's black and it's also somewhat flexible you can use all sorts of stuff even hot glue might work for a little while silicone also on the outside would work but this stuff sets somewhat hard so 
that should give it good uh, rigidity. The glue has dried. You can see it there. And on the inside, the silicone. And so it's really sturdy in there. It's pretty much solid. And by the way, if you're wondering, these plastic welded pieces, they're also, you know, part of the whole structure now. And that's not coming apart. Just in case, let's test uh, this seal here before we go any further. So I'm just going to pour some water here. And usually, you know, if there's a leak, it'll start dripping pretty much immediately. But the second one I just made also was leak proof from the first shot. So if you do a thorough job, I think it's pretty easy actually. So that looks good, nice and dry. And uh, obviously because of the check valve, the one-way flow, even if there's water in there, you can unplug the air and do whatever with it. It's not going to leak out. So that's a real nice feature about it. Going with this black rubber hose so that if any moisture does build up in it, but it really shouldn't. There's no reason why it should. But uh, if it does, it, there's no light getting in. So we'll have that connected out here, and then we need just a short piece inside to connect to here and attach it on the inside. Okay, there you go. Pretty much perfect right on center. The other nice thing about these one-way check valves is that this outside black fitting is pretty easy to remove the hose from but it's still airtight so you can see you get that on all the way and pull it off fairly easy so when I go to clean the reservoir I can easily detach it. Whereas the elbows and the splitters like this, they tend to lock on pretty tight once you get it on there. It's really difficult to get it off and pull it quite hard there. And they're just stretching the hose basically. You have to kind of help it along to get it off. There you go. So that's another nice feature. These come off quite easy. So I'm going to use the super old air pump I have from probably when I was a kid and we actually had fish. So air put 1200 or point, I think it's 1200 cc per minute. Is that what that says? Yeah, so cubic centimeter per minute. And PSI 1.5. And let's add the water back in, just to give it a quick test here. So I think I have it pretty high, might have to mark the water level. Okay, so let me just remove some of this water. And I'm gonna dry off the bottom of this basket because I wanna see, yeah, I can feel it there. So the bubbles are popping and flinging up tiny droplets of water there. So you see it's not touching about, um, Looks to be about 8 to 10 millimeters separating the basket and the water level. Alright, so let's check it after a few minutes here. 
Oh yeah, look at that. Covered. And um, the thing about these systems where you're using the tiny droplets that the blow bubbles fling up is that the nature of the bubbles can kind of change. So if you have lots of organic matter down there and it's kind of turning into almost a compost tea, the bubbles won't pop as easily and they'll fill, fill up and form kind of like a foam layer. So they'll probably still work, but if the water is clean, that's when they pop the quickest and probably make the most droplets. That's it, pretty much done. I think it's going to work quite well at keeping the growing medium wet. If anything, I'm worried it might be too wet. Like I was saying before, any time I've had a situation where the moisture stuck around for a bit too long, uh, things didn't really do too well. But I always kind of attribute that to low uh, soil temperatures combination of being too wet and low temperatures leading to kind of anaerobic conditions. But that's going to do it for today. Next time we're going to go ahead and put some growing medium in here and see how well it saturates in and uh, try to do a test run of some kind, uh, test it out, compare it to just a regular setup where I would just use one of these net cups as the container. So it's the other not real nice thing about this design, it's real modular, you can kind of swap things out if it's not doing too well, you can take it out or turn off the pump. Um, yeah, lots of variables to play with for sure. Alright guys, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one. Keep on growing.